Now it's my great pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Mr. Bob Madonna. Prior to establishing himself as a business and technology pioneer and visionary, Mr. Bob Madonna graduated with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering in 1982. He started his career at American Science and Engineering, where he helped to develop the world's largest CAT scanner for testing solid rocket, solid, propel, solid propellant rocket engines. Yearning firsthand experience with the startup company, Mr. Madonna joined Lantel in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. He quickly moved up the ranks from lead engineer to engineering director. At the ripe age of 28 years old, Mr. Madonna declined several high-profile management positions in favor of establishing his own telecommunications company. With no financial backing, but with a sharp determination and uncanny ability to see technology trends, Mr. Madonna founded Excel Switching Corporation. The business started in an attic above a garage, and Excel Switching quickly became the leading provider of open programmable switches for the telecommunications industry. In November of 1997, Mr. Madonna took the company public, and two years later, Lucent Technologies purchased the company for $1 billion. Not a person to rest on his laurels, Mr. Madonna started Savant Systems in 2005. Under Mr. Madonna's hands-on leadership, Savant was the first company to introduce native iPhone application delivering complete home, industry, and classroom automation. Please welcome Mr. Bob Madonna. Thank you, Dr. Choi. I am honored to be here today and share and be part of your commencement from the University of Connecticut School of Engineering. I'd like to congratulate all of you and wish all the mothers out there a happy Mother's Day. What a perfect Mother's Day gift. As I walked around campus yesterday, I was reminded of the many great times I had at the University of Connecticut as a student not too many years ago. Some things have changed. Many new buildings are around that weren't here when I was here. Some things are the same, the quality of your education, and I was glad to see that Ted's is still around. <laughs> I was also reminded of the challenging times here as a student, like walking across the campus in February for my 8 o'clock class in the freezing cold, or this morning for that matter, all-nighters in the library before exams, meeting your senior project deadlines. After years of hard work, you, the future inventors and designers, are leaving here today with the necessary technical skills and training to meet the challenges ahead and to improve the world of engineering. I've learned over the years that the most important quality to add to your technical education are courage, determination, and passion. The courage to change. The courage not to accept the standards or the status quo. The determination and passion to follow your heart and forge ahead to overcome all challenges, even the ones that seem impossible. I learned these things not just from my schooling or my work. I learned these from my father as I was growing up. My father was not a college graduate. He wasn't even a high school grad. Having joined the Navy at 17 to fight in World War II, he was stationed on a LCT. That's a landing craft tanker. These are the boats that carried the brave troops into battle on the beaches across Europe and the Pacific. My dad had fought and lived through the invasions of Europe, landing even on Omaha Beach in Normandy 
on D-Day. After victory in Europe, he was sent to the Pacific to fight. Before my dad passed away a few years ago, he would proudly track the progress of the XL switching company I had taken public. He'd be reading the stock prices every day, and he often attended the stockholder meetings. And he asked me one day after a meeting, he said, Rob, how did you learn to do all this? And I looked at him, I said, Dad, from you. He never really understood. You see, my father was an entrepreneur. He never realized it. He called it working. Having grown up during the Great Depression, it was the way to survive. To get something done, you had to figure out and do it yourself. After World War II, he was the first in Massachusetts to get a GI business loan to start a business. My father and a friend started an aerial photography company, not knowing anything about photography or aviation. <laughs> he was hanging out of small airplanes taking aerial photo photographs. Unfortunately, the business failed. But over the years, numerous other ventures he encountered. And he would take on any challenge. He had a carpentry business, a window display business for clothing stores, a sign making business. He also worked as a skilled machinist uh, making helicopter parts. He was a talented man. He could look at a picture in a magazine and build it, read an engine manual and fix it, take any sign and paint it. He was never afraid to fail or try anything new. He would tirelessly work at something until he perfected it. Experimenting along the way, he would always forge ahead. As a young boy, I'd often tag along, being his helper, handing him tools, holding his ladders, carrying supplies. I helped him roof homes, bang nails, and yes, even dress mannequins. My father had no idea how he had, what, how he had taught me. Not just about welding a hammer or roofing a house. The greatest lesson he taught me is not to have any fear. In the summers, we would often go fishing in a small 14-foot aluminum boat with a small outboard engine on it. My father served in the Navy for so many years, he had no fear of the ocean. We often would take the boat out offshore. These were the days before marine electronics. There was no GPS to get us home, just a compass, the knowledge of the water, and a few life jackets. I remember once as a boy, the weather was turning rough. The fog was rolling in. My father, seeing the fear in my eyes, he started the engine and said, Don't worry, son. We'll be fine getting in. If not, we can always beach the boat. And remember, at least they're not shooting at us. It, <laughs> at least they're not shooting at us? <laughs> Luckily, I only experienced beaching the boat once. I never want to do that again. Over the years, throughout my education and career, if I ever was afraid of a challenge, I would often remember those fishing trips. As I look back on my own graduation, I remember how nervous I was to leave the campus and enter the real world. Because like today, I graduated in the middle of a recession in 1982. Yes, I studied biomedical engineering. My degree was in electrical engineering. Jobs in this field were few and far between in 1982. After searching for several months, I landed an engineering job designing one of the world's largest CAT scanners. My senior project at UConn just happened to be about three-dimensional imaging of the heart. But this wasn't a CAT scanner to take images of the heart. It was taking images of solid propellant rocket engines that were carrying nuclear warheads. My idealistic view of designing medical equipment was slightly burst. It was a very challenging and technical job, and I learned many things. But after two years, I decided to move on. I really want, wanted and yearned for first-hand experience with a startup company. So I took my two years of experience and landed a job at a new telecommunications business. I was young enough for it, not to be a risk. I had nothing to lose, only experience to gain. It is important to take risks, especially with your career, and do it while you're young. At age 24, the only engineer with any experience in this startup, I was put in charge of a dozen engineers fresh out of school. We didn't know at the time that what we were trying to do was almost impossible, and it would have taken hundreds of experienced engineers from established companies. Nonetheless, I learned not just how to design and build product, I learned how to run a business, how to market, how to sell. I was permanently hooked on small companies 
and building them from scratch. Unfortunately, after four years of hard work, the company was shut down by its investors who decided the market was overcrowded. I quickly learned that having four years' experience in this small company was probably equivalent to dozens in, in the large established companies. This experience led to multiple job offers. But I was torn. What direction should I take? Should I follow my gut and start my own company? Or make the safe decision by taking one of the many jobs offered to me? At 27, I was unemployed and not sure what to do. So I asked the CFO, Bob, 